<sighs> when back in 2008, which doesn't sound like that long ago, but actually, hi, <laughs> come here. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back to my tribe. If you find this video helpful, please hit like, maybe you wanna subscribe. This is the channel where I document my projects, weaving, spinning, knitting, crocheting. I guess I'm probably gonna felt this year. Um, is there anything else? I don't know. I guess you kinda never know, right? Your guess is as good as mine, to be honest. If Santa or someone who really loves you got you a spinning wheel for Christmas. Let me be the first to welcome you to the most cuckoo bananas in the best possible way crafting community on the face of the planet. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like it's the best. And also, congratulations, you must have been so good this year. I could probably use some tips. I'm filming this on Christmas Eve. I'm sure I had a wonderful Christmas by the time you see it. So I'm actually sitting in front of my first spinning wheel. Her name is Lola and I'm sitting in front of her because I spun some singles this week and I'm going to use her to ply as soon as I'm done filming. If you wanna see these in yarn, come back and see the next project update video. Whenever I use this wheel, she was my first. I got her in March of, I think 2008, um, as a gift from my husband and my mom for my birthday, which is actually in April which doesn't sound like that long ago, but it kind of was um, as far as like the online communities go. As far as resources went at that time, there wasn't as much available even on YouTube. So you are starting at an awesome time. There are so many resources available to help you get going. So I'm gonna give you the top five things I wish someone had told me when I learned to spin. I taught myself um, originally before this wheel on my mom's antique spinning wheel, which I am not even sure was ever meant to really spin yarn on, but I did use it to teach myself. This is the first wheel that I actually owned myself. So if you're excited, you've got it put together, maybe you don't even have it put together yet, but you're like, okay, what next? I'm here for you. Number one thing, that I wish someone had told me is to get online, get those resources and learn everything you possibly can about your particular wheel. There's multiple different sort of mechanism of action, but the main three groups are bobbin lead, single drive and double drive wheels. There are of course some different like subgroups in those three. So I'm not gonna go into my specific wheel because yours could be completely different. Um, but what I would suggest is get on YouTube. Oh, you're already on YouTube, good job. What I would suggest is get on Facebook if you're on it or Ravelry if you're on that and look for groups dedicated to your wheel manufacturer. Um, those are huge, huge resource of information for questions, for learning. They can always point you to videos on YouTube. Um, great books, all those kinds of things to help you learn the most about your wheel. And the reason I think that that's so important is that it will make you a better spinner. If you know your wheel well enough to make small adjustments, that can sometimes be the only thing you need when you're really struggling, just a small adjustment. So if you really get how it works, you can just learn to spin more easily and better and more quickly and with less frustration because I'm telling you, if you're anything like I was, frustration is going to be part of this equation. So those are great resources. Check out YouTube too. A lot of the wheel manufacturers have channels that have specific videos on their own wheels or whatever else they manufacture. Um, honestly, those they're great resources. Just learn how to adjust the tension, learn what that actually means, if you have a single or a double drive, learn how that actually makes the yarn twist and pull onto the bobbin. Those are really important things. Number two. Okay, this one's not gonna be popular, but I really believe every new spinner should do this. Go to your stash, go to your local Walmart, go to your local Goodwill, 
find some commercial yarn that you don't mind over twisting and basically destroying that you don't make a big investment in. Take it to your wheel, connect it to your bobbin the same way you will when you're going to actually get ready to spin and take some time to practice treadling while you feed in the commercial yarn going in both directions to help teach your body the muscle memory of doing all of that at once. It'll also help you feel what it feels like to have the yarn go from your hand onto the bobbin. And there are a lot of people, I've seen this so many times, that really struggle with like when to let go and allow it to feed onto the bobbin. This is gonna kind of teach your whole body, not just your brain, not just your eyeballs, how to do it all at once. And honestly, I would say like, do a lot, do a full bobbin, maybe do two bobbins. This is really a good investment in time. I know you're gonna wanna like get out there and grab that fiber and start going for it. That brings me to number three. So number three, a lot of people are tempted to just like use cheap wool that they don't really mind if they ruin and I will tell you that I understand that temptation being a cheap penny pincher myself and I have no problem saying it. I would say that's something where I totally get saying I just want to use something really cheap or something I can get my hands on, I don't know, easily, free, whatever. I really believe that while you're learning, it's better to use a better quality wool. That will really help you eliminate some of the frustration because as a brand new spinner, you may not know the difference between what's in your hands that you got really cheap and what, how much better it could actually be if you were using something even just a little bit more expensive. If money is a really big issue, there's lots of Etsy shops where you can buy undyed wool for pretty fair prices, like a whole pound. It's really worth the investment because if you can reduce your frustration, everything is gonna be more smooth in this process. So the fourth and the fifth kind of go together a little bit. The fourth is spend a little bit of time every single day for a while, maybe the first two months if you can. And when I say a little bit of time, it literally could be 10 minutes. I would suggest spend 15 minutes and set a timer on your phone so you just do it every day. It can be hard to find the time, so that means you know, there are probably gonna be days where you literally cannot squeeze in 15 minutes. But if you're really trying to make it a priority and you do it 28 or 27 days out of the next 31 days, that's like a lot of time and you are not gonna believe how much different your yarn comes out at the end of a month if you just commit to doing that. I really wish someone had told me that. And along that same line, for a little while, maybe only the first week or two, depending on how fast you come along, don't sit down and say, I'm gonna spend two hours because it can be frustrating to learn a new skill. And that's just kind of the way it is. In fact, I just learned how to warp this loom that's right next to me in the last two weeks. I did my very first successful warp on it, but the reason I have to put the word successful in is because I first had a crazy unsuccessful warp. <laughs> Learning things can be really frustrating at times. So for some of us, limiting the amount of time our first few sessions go is good for the frustration level. I'm one of those people, that's me. <laughs> and the last is about frustration. So the last is also about frustration. If you feel like, oh my goodness, this is just not for me, and I'm telling you the reason I'm saying this is because I, my mom, when I borrowed her wheel, I think it was the end of November, and during December, I can remember saying to my husband, like, I'm just gonna put this wheel outside in the snow, and I don't care, I never wanna see it again, I can't do this, I'm not meant to do this, it's okay. But that's because I would get to that frustration point and I would just wanna push past it. And I would tell myself, if I'm patient enough, if I try hard enough, if I keep pushing, I'm gonna push through this. I don't think for some personality types, that's the best way. I think it would have been much better for me to have every time I hit that frustration point to have just said, I'm gonna go do something else. If you feel frustrated, 
walk away and do something else for a while. Read a book, knit a sock, do whatever it is you're gonna do with your yarn when it's finished. Come back when you don't feel frustrated anymore and spend another 15 minutes. But above all those things, Every single time you feel like saying, I just can't do this, it's not for me, I don't understand why I can't do it. You might have any of those thoughts, just remind yourself that people have been learning how to do this for hundreds of years. I learned how to do it, and if I can learn how to do it, you can too. I know you can do it. Thanks for watching, you guys. I love you, bye.